I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I'd like to talk about um, data movies and an innovative way to, um, to visualize player behavior and to overcome the challenge of how to balance a game uh, properly and correctly. And at the heart of everything that, that we do in our company and other companies uh, who are in the same uh, space as we are in the free-to-play uh, space um, is the player. We have to understand the player behavior to make sure and to ensure that our games hit the spot and, uh, and enable our players to enjoy the game at the most. So, and uh, Ian has uh, in this keynote this morning already shown his wife, so I'm going to follow suit. This is from my wife. Uh, she is playing mystery match in this, for, in this picture. Um, and I find that quite often playing games like mystery match, other casual games, um, and this was something when, when I look back, let's say five years ago, completely unheard of. I was told her, well, you're going to be spending an hour a day roughly playing casual games that, that would not have, it would have been, I, I don't think so. I think that would, not, it would, it would have got a, um, a reaction that was a, a rather an unbelief. I, I don't believe that. And now it's happening. She is there. She's playing our games and uh, she's thoroughly, in, thoroughly enjoying this. And this is new to her but also new to us as well as a company. So, you know, I've, I've been in the game industry now for the last 13 years. And when I started, we made games uh, mainly for a, a core audience, you know, a core audience who play on PlayStation, who play on, on PC. And now our team in Dundee, Outplay done in Dundee, uh, we are now um, thinking about the behavior of, of players like my wife. Um, we're doing this quite successfully, I have to say. Um, we are now the largest, uh, the largest independent uh, games, uh, mobile games developer in, in the UK. Uh, we've got about 150 staff and we've got six games out there live on the Amazon App Store and other, and other stores as well. And we're doing pretty well. And the core of doing well from my experience and from my, uh, for, for my uh, observation is that we have a very good grasp on data, a very good understanding of how our players um, how our players play our games, and today I like to uh, introduce a bit of the challenge of, of of this. So lift the hood a bit up and say, okay, what's how do we do these things, and then share some some insights, uh, and then we go to, uh, in the second part. I'm going to show you an, an, a, a, a tool. It's called Data Movie Director, where we look dynamically at data, so we can see how data actually uh, moves in real time. Okay. So a challenge, um, so let's talk about, not, not, sure, not everyone might not be aware of uh, has, has played casual games, uh, just in general, most games have a very, very uh, similar structure. So you have usually a, a map uh, where you have the individual, um, where you have the individual boards, levels lined up, so from level one to level two and so on. And in each of these, if you play one of these um, levels, uh, the gameplay is actually relatively simple, easy to pick up. You know, you have very, think, think of Tetris, uh, think of a Rubik's Cube, so to speak. So very simple mechanics, but you can add a lot of depth, and the more you think about the game, the more um, the, you have lots of options that you can add to the game to make the game very, um, very enjoyable from, and very easy to pick up. So it's a very, it's a very good combination of, of, of complexity, but also of uh, accessibility. So to the, to the left you see the map, to the right you see this example of Mr. Match, you see the board, Mr. Match is a typical match three game, so you match three uh, gems of the same color, they disappear, more gems fall, fall from the sky, you have more options and so on. It's very compelling, these games are very compelling to our audience. To understand the player journey or to understand uh, the core of the game, we have to quickly look at the, the typical steps that a player um, is experiencing going through the game. So it all starts with a welcome screen. Hello, you're going to want to start this level. Um, in this case, level one, you have to remove the dark squares. Um, we give you some options that you can use some boosts, some, some pre-boosts uh, that might help you in the game that you can use tactically. And then you, s you press play. You start the game, you play the game. Inside in the game, you can use extra items that can help you uh, and that can use tactically in the game uh, to match the challenge. You, wi you win or you lose. As usual in life, uh, at the end, um, you, you get a, you, you one screen, some stars, that's awesome. Or, well, be better luck next time, you lose a life, uh, you want to retry. Or, and this is uh, kind of important, um, if you're out of moves, so for example, you have maybe 30, 40 moves we give you in advance. Um, but maybe you just need one move more or two. So you have the option to say, okay, I want to uh, use the extra moves. I want to have five more moves uh, to, to overcome this level. And there's also 
uh, a shop that you can visit where you can say, okay, I need more uh, items in the game so you can, can buy in-app purchases. So the whole thing, if you put it on a uh, abstract graph, you're on the pipe, so to speak, it all starts with our players starting the game, maybe losing replay, making here a final, or not final, very important decision. Uh, okay, I've lost the level, what am I going to do next? And maybe this player, okay, decides to use a boost, use an in-game boost, goes to the shop, wins potentially. That's one path that you can go through this game. Another path is uh, tenacity, okay, you replay, and then at some point, wow, I've done it, I've, I've finished this level, I'm, I'm, um, I, well, I've, well, I've, I've just finished the level, which is a good feeling in, in general. But there's also a negative experience we can provide if you don't do it, if you don't get it right. First of all, this, impossible. You play and play and play, you, you lose, you, it's, it's frustrating and, and you don't see an end to this game. And you start, you call it churn, fall off, you just don't like the game anymore, you just you dro you drop out of the game and retention uh, is suffering from this. The other path is that you is even worse in, in terms for, for us as a company. Um, this person has actually used in-game items and has, has probably put some hope on it that he will uh, survive, <laughs> that, he will, um, that he will win this level, and he didn't. And that must be quite frustrating if you, if you do these kind of things. And the last one is this person just browsed through the level without any challenge. So he just he started the level, won the level immediately, and that's for some people or for most people, uh, okay, that's good, fine once, but if, if the game, whole game is like this, that you can just play without any challenge, uh, it's just boring. It just doesn't make any sense. So frustrating, too hard, annoying, or boring. So for us as games developer, um, we always have this kind of balance, to hit the right balance between retention and monetization. So if a level is easy, easy to play, and it is usually quite more, is usually more enjoyable, which means retention, so keeping people in, is higher, is up, while monetization is, is down. You know? Because if, if I don't need anything to pass a level, why would I buy something from, from the store? The other way is uh, if you make levels too hard, if you, lead, if you read literature and, and websites, uh, people talk about pay cliffs, yeah? so they put really hard levels into the game and <laughs> expect people then to pay. Um, I think that's not great design, to be honest, but uh, it, it's certainly something that you can do, and you, you will increase monetization. I, I, can, I can say that. You can increase monetization, so you make money at a level, but you will find that people just fall off. They, they not everyone will follow you down that road, and, which is obviously not a good thing long term. Broken level, you really get it wrong, so it's really too easy, no fun at all, people leave, or it's so hard that even... It's just impossible. This game is no fun at all. And this is, um, this is what can happen quite easily uh, if, if you don't get it right, if you don't get the balancing of the game right. So how can our designers influence difficulty? And fortunately, <laughs> for analytics, unfortunately, but fortunately, there are lots of ways we can, we can change difficulty. The number of, the simplest one is how many moves do you have at the start, right? Uh, the variation of colors. If you have only four colors on the board of five, a match three game becomes much easier than if you have the full spread of six to nine colors uh, where matches are not as not that often. Uh, goals, set different goals, uh, the mechanics, different mechanics, blockers, and even the size and shape of the board. If you play these games, you find that some of the boards are just square, which is always easy, and some boards are fiendish. They are like they have little corners and little, uh, they have, have gaps inside, so the shape of the board determines difficulty as well. So there's lots of things you can change that influence uh, your game and your, your balancing of your game. And this was just for one level. So if you now think about, if you now think about uh, two of these levels combined, yeah, so you, you finish a level and you come out of the level and you, you feel something. You feel, well, this was really awesome. I want more. Well, this was not really great. I'm going to stop playing today. So the, what happened in the past influences your actual player behavior right now. So there's, there's a dependency between levels. And the main thing really that you should consider, and this is why what, what I felt working for Outplay is, is something that I really appreciate, to be honest, is the fact that the fun fact that the quality is the number one priority, should be the number one priority in everything that you do when you design and make games. There's nothing is more important than 
creating a fun experience for the player. Uh, you create, obviously, more tolerance. So if the game at some point is not really great, if the player had fun so far, he will tolerate this. He will go with you. Um, if it also means uh, he, might be, he might be more inclined to say, OK, I'm, I'm, I like this game. I'm going to invest more in this game because I really enjoy and I want to see more what's happening in this game. Also, of course, uh, better retention. And how to design it? Well, I said before, quality. So our CEO, um, he claims he has a 60 frames per second vision. And our QA department is suffering slightly from this. Um, we are, it goes down to up, to, up to the top. The, the very top in our company is interested in, in the smallest details of our games, to, that they're really polished to the, to the best extent that's possible in time. Uh, so we take a lot of uh, care about, especially the visuals, especially the, the game design and, 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 uh, and uh, um, the balancing. Uh, another very important item is time. So if you measure the time a player plays a level, this has a direct impact. You can really see the motivation of a player. If, if I fail fast, that's not as bad if, if I spend 10 minutes and then at the end, oh, by the way, you didn't finish the level. That's a different experience, you know. Fail fast, fail often. I mean, this is a, this is a lean. <laughs> it also applies actually to, um, it applies also to games. So we rather have people failing uh, faster than, than putting to like a Monopoly game where at the end you play two hours, you lose for two hours. That's, that's not really a great experience at all. Okay, so the challenge is beat, balance each level and balance the flow between levels. And we're not talking about two, we're talking in this case, this is a, because the graphic is so impressive, <laughs> we're talking about 56 here. And you should know at the moment in September, uh, we have 705 levels just for Mystery Match. And we have other games, um, Angry Birds Pop, over a thousand levels uh, we did with this, uh, we have there. And we're growing our, the number of levels every week by 20 levels. So it's, 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 not, and it's not easy. Yeah, it's not like a, a closed uh, um, equation that you can resolve mathematically. It's something that is actually quite, uh, requires a lot of craft, a lot of insight into data. Data, uh, I think every one of us, or most of you guys, I'm sure, um, know or, or have experience. Um, the number one, wire up your game. Make sure that your game has the right, sends the right information uh, to your analytic, uh, analytic systems. So things like pass rate. So if, if, you, if I want to know uh, on today which people played these levels, how many of them passed that level, how many failed the level, uh, how many used the boost, uh, how, many, how long did it take them to complete the level, uh, how many moves were left when they failed or when they passed. These things are important to know and we capture all these things. Right now, currently at Outplay, we, we collect about 1 million data events per game just for, level, uh, for these levels. It could be many, many more if we wanted to, but we sampled the levels. We say 1 million events per day is actually a good number to do proper statistics on. We don't need 10 billion or 10 million. Uh, this, is, uh, this is already kind of a, um, a decision we made. Uh, we store all of our data in AWS, and we use SQL and R. We have a, a, I'm the operations and analytics manager at Outplay. I have a team of, of I don't know, four analysts. So these guys analyzing these, these data with statistical met methods and make sure that we make sense of, of the sea and ocean, ocean of data. So, so how do we make sense of this? How do we make the right decisions? And there's two ways to do this. Uh, and the first way is I call it qu it's called quantitative analysis. And this is really, and I'm not going to go through in this because this would be fill another half day or a day even to talk about this alone. Um, this is traditional analytics. Um, churn, scatter plots, uh, looking at, at revenue per day, per level, all these things that we do and that give us lots of insights, what is actually happening and we can test our assumptions and so on. And often we just don't know. We don't know if we make a level harder or easier what the impact is. We have an, we have an idea. Well, if, it's, if we make it harder, we should, get more, we should uh, make, uh, make more money. But what about retention? So we have a guess. But what really helps is to run experiments where you roll out levels with different difficulty to a certain amount of people and keep it uh, the control as it was before. And then you measure the impact of, of difficulties on uh, particular levels. This is just an example here. Uh, the, the, these, uh, these are two different stores we did this. Uh, it's actually interesting to know that uh, you even find differences if you change levels on a different store. Uh, so if you just do your tests and experiments on one store, 
uh, you might actually break something for the people in the other stores. I didn't know that. I, I wasn't aware, but we did the experiments and all of a sudden, look at this, this is different. I didn't, uh, it was an interesting experience to see the data. Um, so these are just uh, two experiments that we run. Uh, we, we do some simulations here to see the, the error in our data and, and then we can make qualified decisions if something is, is for the benefit um, of us and the player or not. Yeah? And this is all traditional things. We're not going to go into this in detail. Um, but I'm from my education and, and from my mindset, I'm more, more of a scientist, I'm a physicist, and I always like to touch and see things. Yeah, that's, that's just, uh, I'm comfortable with statistics, but I'm more someone who likes to, uh, yeah, to do things and to see things. And that's why we um, also looked into qualitative analysis. So the quantitative answers, object, answers questions, while the qualitative analysis is actually raising questions. I want to, I want to look at stuff and come up with questions. What, what's going on here? You know? And this is why we uh, did develop the data movie director, which is just a very different way of looking at data uh, from, a more, um, from a more dynamic perspective. So we're going to change now from the world of slides into the world of software. Um, so, okay. What you see here, this is not very impressive, I, I, I guess, <laughs> is one level. This is in, the, okay, in level 18, so the whole block is one level. And we're going to see how um, three of our players, player 194, 195, and 196, um, are passing through this level. If you see a red color, it means this person failed. If you see a green color, you will see the person passed the level. If you see a blue color, it means the person used an extended move. Yeah? So let's have a look at these three guys. And let's look at the data directly. So fail, first one failed, failed. Second one comes in, fails. Both fail without knowing each other, of course. Failing. Now the top one is using extended moves twice and he's passing now. The third one was lucky or just a great player. He passed directly, basically, while the middle guy is still playing. Yeah, he's still failing, failing, and now he's passed. Yeah? So he didn't use any moves. He didn't use any uh, boost or so. He just tenaciously went through the levels and, and passed this thing. So this is, of course, kind of interesting. This is exactly what we saw in this engine before the engine picture, before when I, when I showed you these little uh, smiley faces walking. So we can see this now. This is real data. This is, not, uh, this is not PowerPoint. This is real data for our players. I should say all the data is older. So what you see here is not the, our latest, of course, but it's, uh, it's very representative of what we see in, in our. So immediately I've got some questions here. I wonder, well, it, well, well, how many of these guys do we have who use these extended moves? Is it just one? Just lucky? This guy? Is it more? Right? And is he using that all the time? So how do people uh, go through our, our games? So let's look at the same three guys. And let's look not just at one level 18, but at level from level 1 to the left to level 185. Yeah? So same guys. So let's start from, from level 1. So as you can see, or we will see, basic old starts well. Everyone has green. These are the tutorial levels. These are the first levels that everyone has to pass where we just explain the game. So we actually really don't want people to fail anyway. Yeah? Um, so this is what you see here. So they all march on happily. And all of a sudden, you start seeing the first fails on top. They all fail here on level, I think, 13 it is. I can, you can see all there's some blues here coming up. So let's make it a bit faster, so just to see. So now I can see, you, actually, I don't know how you feel about this, but I can feel something. I can see a story developing here that where people are struggling and how they progress. I can see different, three different guys here with very different strategies going through our game. So I'm going to speed this up even a bit further. Okay. And I think it's quite, hopefully quite visible. Um, the, the brightness of each of these bars uh, depicts the number of attempts. So it gets the brighter it is, the more attempts. Yeah? So it, it adds up actually things. So the darker it is, no worries, you just one event or two or uh, two times, the brighter it gets, the more difficult it becomes. 
Um, the tool also has a kind of connection uh, to uh, quantitative, uh, quantitative analysis. So we can look here, for example, now the usage per player of, uh, of, diff of these different uh, items. So the third player here you can see has, well, hmm, he seems not to be, and, and this is just from the data looking at this and interpreting as a human being, this guy or person does not seem to be very patient. Yeah? So he has the same amount of fails than he has wins. And he he's using this, uh, these extended moves very intensively. So, aha, there will be players out there that are do th who are doing this. That's interesting information. Now we can go back to quantitative analysis, and I can ask the analysts, I want to know how many of these guys do we have in our audience. Yeah? Is this 1%, 10%? But I might not have raised the question without looking at the data. Yeah? This, is, uh, this is kind of the difference here. The guy in the middle, um, he seems to be more, is it tenacious? I mean, he came, he managed to get further into the game as well than the top guy here. Um, so, okay, same data here. So you can see uh, he is, in relation to the others, uh, he is much more inclined to fail more often and just tries himself to get uh, through the level. Yeah? So these are diff three different guys, different people that we can see here. Okay, that's, I hope, for interesting. But still, well, okay, three people, coincidence. Well, it would be kind of nice to see more people, not just three. Let's say uh, we have a look at uh, 100, 100 players. So on this, why we have, th this is what the Data Movie Director does, basically. The Data Movie Director is, is nothing else than a, a tool, a, a UI for our designers to use uh, to look at movies. We call this movies, or I call this movies. Um, very conveniently so they can slice and dice the data but also um, play those movies for themselves and make their own exploratory analysis. So let's look at, um, for a match three game, four weeks observation time, 100 players, and I just press the action button. Okay, so that is very fast. So now we have not three rows anymore, you have 100, so we see 100 players in total. Uh, I go back to the director. I change the camera. I'm going to say I want to see. I want to start slow. I want to see some progress, uh, some uh, some flash, so I can see the difference actually between the data. Okay, go back here. So re replay latest movie. So it starts very slow. And I can also see the flash. I know where something is happening. Otherwise, it, it seems to be like to, to be blurring. And all of a sudden, we have a different picture here. You have. You can see now the 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 speed people pass through the game. You can see difference between people. You can see some outliers, uh, like this guy here. He's given up now. In four weeks, he came to level 49. This person here is, is soldiering on, right, um, for, for the next four weeks. And if I speed this up further, so you can see that at the end, uh, the, okay, this is order. This is in certain order. You can see now that the last guy, number 100, he actually is a winner. He nearly finishes the game in, in, in that amount of time, yeah, in four weeks. While everything else, everyone else, uh, seemed to be struggling before and seemed to be giving up and not playing anymore, uh, or at least not, uh, d don't come that far in the game, this, the last guy, number 100, he did it. So what's different from this guy to everyone else? It's kind of an interesting, another interesting question, another interesting question you, you like to ask. Um, if you extend the whole thing, let's see the same, the same, uh, let's go for 400. Yeah, this is a bit smaller now. So these are 400 players. It depends a bit on the screen resolution that sometimes comes a bit, uh, it's, it's a bit, um, it's a bit bigger than on, on some screens. So this is obviously not the ideal one. But what you can see immediately you see some ribbons forming. Yeah? Uh, let me have a look. Yeah. You see those ribbons here, vertical ribbons, uh, where the color is very bright. And these are the difficulty spikes in our game. I mean, you can see this, obviously, with uh, quantitative analysis. But it's quite interesting to see just dynamically this picture evolving and then diving into the individuals here. And the tool also gives you then the ability to look more from a quantitative side. You just have to wait for these events, because one of the players is still soldiering on. You can see the counter here. These are the number of events. So one player is um, 
sending over 1,800 events in four weeks. So this person is playing the game, and well, minus, of, of course, the, the extended moves, 1,600 times. So we're talking about really addicted in terms of uh, fun, addicted players who really love the game and play every day, right? And you can see it here. And now we have the, op the options uh, to look at per on, a level by on a level basis. Uh, the, so red means fail, as you know, green means pass. And you can see immediately, if I, if I scale this, you can see all the levels that are very hard. So the red is very high up. Um, so these levels, well, you can see also that the people use extended moves. And this is exactly the balance between retention and, and monetization. So you can see this is, these are the levels that are very hard. And then in comparison, levels that are very easy, where you got lots of green and very little red. Yeah. And then we talked about the balance. So this is the, the funnel. So we start with, let's say, 100% of players. And this is over time, over these four weeks, how many are left in the game? Yeah, so where do we lose these people? And when you see something like this, a, a really drop like this, this is basically shows you, okay, there is something probably not right in the game. If, if you lose so many people at one level, uh, you can see uh, also here we can, we can switch it to a delta. Uh, so, oops. so if this bar is high, that means uh, we are losing lots of players on this bar. And this is immediate alert for our designers, immediate alert for us and to say, is that a good thing? Is it something you can tolerate? Or is it something that is just not fun? There is something is wrong in this area. Yeah? And here we can, we can see it directly. Okay, I'm not sure how much am I for time? Um, roughly, is it? Seven minutes. Sorry? Seven minutes. Excellent, cool. Very good. So, um, that's actually um, a good uh, segue, time. Um, we talked, these are, these are basically is, is a, a depiction of events after event after event. What about time, the time component? How, how much do people actually play per day, per session? And the tool is able to show you this as well. So let's go back to our original one, the purchases here. And we just look as a pacer, we set it to time. And let's have a look what's, what happened with the data. So what we see now, this is, okay, let me just go back. Switch off the flashes. Okay. Taken off this. Right. Okay. So this is what all the players have achieved. Let's go back. In day one. This is 100 players. And you can see one player incredibly has managed to get to nearly finishing half of the game. Uh, that's he, on, on day one, he managed to get to level 73. It's amazing. I don't know how the person did it. Actually, maybe I do, because I think let's find out. But the, again, it's about raising questions. What happens on day one? What is the experience of our players on day one? Can we see groups? Can we see segment, segments here uh, that we want to follow up and, and analyze and understand better? So if we see now for the next days, how this evolves. OK. And this is a bit probably difficult to see, because it's all overlapping. So we have in our tool the option just to look at the deltas. So I'm disabling additive mode. Look at the same data. Now you see what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is day two. This is what happened in day two. Day three, day four. You can speed this up, of course. So you can see that after 10 days, 12 days, people are still playing, um, while after, let's say, 20 days, it seems to be drying out. You know, again, this is, this is, this is real data. These are a special cohort, so this is not outplay performance as such. It's just a, a particular set of, of players that we looked at. And it's also over a year old, this, this kind of data. So I shouldn't, um, yeah, don't take any, anything away in terms of the, the um, in terms of data itself. Um, what we also can do here is just to concentrate, so we can edit the, the data and say, I just want to look at player number 100. So I just concentrate on one, so I find one of the guys was actually really interesting. So I want to see, just for one player, this is for one player his first day, the second day, third day, and so on. And you can see immediately that something that you would probably would expect, this person seems to be stopping his play time or his game. Oops, in other words, this person seems to be stopping, stopping to play when he fails. 
Yeah? It seems to be, his day seems to be ending with a red bar, which means he failed, he maybe tried, and said, ah, I can't be bothered anymore, I'm, I'm doing something else, only to come back the next day and starting all over again. As you can see here, for example, he starts the game with a very high volume of plays, uh, of, of plays, you know, of, of, of playing this level, on this, on this level, and he finishes on the, on the red again, and this is a trend that continues quite, oops, that continues basically through all of this gameplay. And this is an int interesting information for our designers as well, you know. Um, so the way you lose should be something that you don't feel bad about. It should be something that actually, okay, well, I lost, but it shouldn't be like the end of the world for you, but something that you might not take that seriously or that hard if it happens. It's an, it's an insight here. Okay. I think... Um, there's lots of, of course, lo <laughs> as usual, lots of mo uh, lots more options here. We can just select one event and so on. But I think we just go uh, talk about integration of this tool um, and a bit of technology. What's behind this? Um, first of all, the tool is utterly generic in terms of the tool doesn't know what win, lose, or anything or, or moves. It, it just doesn't care. What the tool knows is it gets the JSON data structure that tells him, okay, um, this thing, this event, win, lose, or whatever, is assigned to a certain player or user, which is just a row. It doesn't even have to be a player. It can be any data that, uh, that, is, uh, um, uh, that, that has a certain uh, structure like this. Um, and so you get an x-axis, you get a y-axis, and we can name these differently, and we can say, okay, this event, what happens here, is assigned to this y and to this x, and it has a certain quality in terms of win, lose, or whatever you like to assign to this uh, day. And also, uh, this data point it has also a time dimension. It has a running, so a, 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 a number, so to speak, a, a running number, a time, and a session. Uh, but again, you can rename all these things and put different. So the tool is completely generic and doesn't really um, care about the content. It just displays these things in, in, on, on this kind of scale as you like it. The integration uh, at Outplay, and this is slightly the future for us, so it's not all in place as it is here right now. Um, so basically what the game does, I can use a clicker now again, uh, what the game does is basically sending data, that's standard, so we have, of course, uh, the games are connected to our APIs, uh, talking to them, getting information, but we also have wired up, of course, uh, the events, so the, the analytics is working, so we collect all this data, the data is then, then uh, import into our analytics databases uh, real-time and also um, event data. And then we have a, or will have a configurator saying, okay, of these players, I want to see maybe all the best paying players, all the best playing payer, uh, players. Um, I want to look at these for a certain amount of time. Um, and I want to see certain events. I want to see win, lose, or any other thing. Anything our designers can think of that they like to see on the timeline, we can wire up and show and put a data movie to it. So we gen generate these JSON files, fancy name data movies. We have the data movie director, which enables you to watch them. And the designers then, the idea is that the designer, the game designer, has a workbench, a level workbench, where he can, he's putting all these things together, the board size, the, the items on the board, and you should see the context. So I'm changing this level now, but the context of this level is this. So he can see the movie and say, okay, if I change this, well, the story might change for my paying users, for my non-paying users, uh, for people who just started. Yeah, that's good. So this is the idea, and then we can feed this information, this new level, the change level back, into the game via DLC, so we can test all these things out and see, okay, did it actually work in the way that we expected it to work? So summary, balancing one level is hard, balancing a thousand levels is harder, <laughs> getting it right is the es essence of, of uh, being a, a successful uh, game studio, uh, if, you make, if you're in a casual space, um, and qualitative analysis is just a very good way, from my point of view, to see, to feel data, and to create stories that, um, that you can explore and, and um, objectify with quantitative analysis. So I asked my wife, um, why, why do you like playing these games? You know, she, she literally spent nearly a year on one level. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, <laughs> it's a, well, if I know that eventually I can beat every level. 
Okay, that's what we do in our games <laughs> studio. We make sure that people enjoy our games. Uh, so thank you very much for, for listening and for, for being here. Um, there's this QRC code, a bit smaller than the other presentations. Uh, but please leave feedback. Uh, hopefully you win something. And uh, thanks for your attention. <laughs>